everything you, everything you need for worship um, is in your bulletin, including the music to the hymns that we're singing. This is our second hymn singing service since returning to hymn singing. So we're so delighted about that. I invite you to stand as you are able as our service begins. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruits of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, Bounding over the hills, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 45 responsibly by whole verse. My heart is stirring with a noble song, let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is to say, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, the people this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand that there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile but the things that come out are what defile. For it is written, from the human heart that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. May I speak to you in the name of the true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The last time that I read this passage from the Gospel of Mark carefully, I thought that the idea of a community divided over the issue of hygiene practices was rather unrelatable. Debates over handwashing seemed like a thing of the long ago past, something that went on in the ancient world, but not something I could relate to. The closest connection that I had to this passage was looking with interest at some of the special two-handled pitchers you can find in the bathrooms of some kosher restaurants for Orthodox Jews to use in prayer, handwashing before meals. Regardless, purity in the community was not something that I had to worry about on a regular basis. But this time, reading it in the light of COVID-19, as a priest who has been part of a community making difficult decisions around pandemic precautions, the story comes to life in a, in a new way. Maybe it has for you too. A community divided. How many ways are there to frame the debate? I came up with a couple. Here's one. On the one hand, you have a group with a long-held belief in doing things the way they have always been done. And then, on the other, a group trying a new way, despite the voices of those in authority. How about this? a group of people in power trying to enforce obsessive hygiene practices versus a group who understands that none of this really matters to God. Here's a third way. A group that is trying to protect the community with simple norms versus a group that only cares for their own comfort regardless of the implications of others. One more. A group that is overly cautious and restrictive versus a group that wants to live life as normal, even if there's some risk, because there's risk in everything. I'm not sure about you, but I have had what feels like hundreds of conversations about shared norms around hygiene in the past few weeks. At the beginning of the summer, many of us hoped that COVID-19 was in the rearview mirror 
and these disagreements would also be behind us. But the end of the summer has us facing more conversations about masks than ever before. Now, I'm not sure how this happened, but some time ago, I got subscribed to the email list for America Magazine's mailing list. For those of you that don't know, America Magazine is the weekly magazine of the Jesuits. They are an order of Catholic priests that was founded 480 years ago. Normally, I just read the headlines and don't dig deeply into this particular publication. But this week, one article caught my attention. Is a face-off over masks dividing your parish? You're not alone, it says. It's always interesting to peek over the proverbial fence into your neighbor's yard to see what's going on over there. They chronicle division in Catholic parishes between two groups of people, those who mask and vax and those who do neither. Some of the faithful report that animosity towards clergy is greater than they've ever seen it, greater even than when reports of sex abuse concealed by those in power rolled out by the thousands in the mid-2000s and 2010s. Some Catholic dioceses communicate a position against all pandemic precautions. Others require masks for all people and family reservations to aid in social distancing. We've tried a lot of these things here. It can feel like communities are being torn apart. We are experiencing some of this here too. Here at St. John's, I know that there are people who won't come as long as we ask people to wear masks. And there are also people who won't come if we don't ask people to wear masks. And for all the different opinions that you find within a single community, the differences between communities are even greater. As I read this morning's gospel, I wondered how we might map today's conversation onto the debate in Jesus' community. It is, thank goodness, not a one-to-one -one correlation. Jesus does not weigh in on this debate. In the Gospel of Mark, those calling for a return to normal are also those pushing for more restrictive hygiene practices. Those calling for a new and different way are those who say the more cautious practices are unnecessary. The relationship between tradition and caution that we see today is switched. Today, tradition is aligned with fewer restrictions, and caution, and excuse me, I want to make sure I get this right. Today, tradition is aligned with less restriction, and then it was aligned with more. So where is the word for the church in this today, if Jesus is not going to tell us what to do? Is there anything for us to learn in the conflict that Jesus and the disciples faced? One of the ways of reading this passage, it looks like Jesus clearly takes a side in the debate. He calls out those demanding the more scrupulous hygiene practices, the religion of grace and freedom versus the religion of law and control. You might have heard things like that before. But on closer examination, you'll see that it's actually only some of the disciples who aren't doing the ritual washing. It's not a rejection of the whole community. And if only some of them aren't washing, that means that some of the disciples clearly are still washing. And we know that this is true because even after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, the matter is still unresolved in the book of Acts and in the letters of Paul. This is not about who is right and wrong in the debate. This fight isn't really about hand washing at all. And Jesus' answer isn't who's reached the right conclusion. It's about the process that they used to get there and the conversation and the relationships that they had in that process. Jesus doesn't call the Pharisees control freaks. He doesn't call them rule followers. He doesn't accuse them of too much caution. He doesn't even accuse them of legalism. Instead, he has two observations. 
First, he calls them hypocrites. And second, he questions whether they are being driven by a wholehearted version of who God made them to be or motivated by what is evil within them. Calling them hypocrites struck me in particular. It's a word that in Greek implies something slightly different than what we mean for it today. It refers to people in Greek plays who are masked actors who hide their face. They are someone who uses their voice, but hides who they really are, and maybe even what they really think. Does that connect with anything in our world? We've all been in communities where people hide their face when they disagree, but continue to use their voice. The internet is a great place for this kind of conversation. Maybe we've even done it ourselves, not shown up to the conversation in the community, in the open, but still shared freely how we felt about it on the sidelines. I know I've done this. I've been in the meeting after the meeting. I think it's one of those things that's in us as human beings. It's a part of who we are. A fear of being seen to disagree. In calling them hypocrites, Jesus asks the Pharisees to show up honestly. And I think that as we enter the second fall of this pandemic time, and as we navigate the many relationships we are a part of, from the intimate to the bureaucratic, it's a question that we can all ask ourselves. Even if I disagree with this person, am I treating them with respect? And if I'm treating them with respect to their face, am I tearing them apart with my words when I am away from them? This is frankly a framework that we can carry into all aspects of our lives. Jesus' second observation about the Pharisees is equally important. It's not enough merely to be honest if we are also careless. Jesus challenges not the conclusions that the Pharisees reach, but how they get there. He questions not their stated, per stated perspective, but the true motivations that underlie their words. Are they really worried about piety? Or is there some other reason for policing the disciples' handwashing? Jesus tells them, there is nothing outside a person that defiles, but the things that come out are what defile. What Jesus is saying is that it's not truly about the conclusions that we reach, but about why we reach those conclusions and how we communicate them. Jesus lists some of the things that might motivate a human heart which is not functioning at its best. Fornication, theft, adultery, avarice, wickedness. The list goes on. A list of internal problems that some of us might recognize and some that we may not even think of as problems in our day and age. Pride stood out to me. But none of them are motivations that cause us to look outward to consider how we relate to the whole community. Their motivations that turn us inwards. When we make our decisions, Jesus calls us not to consider only our own selves, but our best selves as we relate to the whole community so that we may not be torn apart by our disagreements as described in America Magazine. These tasks are both hard tasks. Avoiding hypocrisy, not hiding our face when we speak in community, and allowing our de decisions to be motivated not by our weakness and self-focus, but rather by a love for the whole. These tasks require bravery, and they require self-knowledge. But the good news in Christ is that we are not alone in these tasks. Not only do we have each other in community, but we also have Jesus himself, who gave everything he had to show us a different way and to invite us into a reality where the death-dealing forces of this world are overcome by love. 
Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are strengthened to live as Jesus taught us. And through the saving work of Christ, we are empowered to be more than we thought we could ever be. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. I ask your prayers for Lawrence, Bill, Daniel, and Geraldine, our bishops, Gideon and Mary Beth, our clergy, Nicole, our Haitian partner priest, and for all clergy and other ministers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. I ask your prayers for Joe, our president, Kathy, our governor, and for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. I ask your prayers for Israel and Palestine and for peace in the Holy Lands. I ask your prayers for the people and nation of Haiti as they recover from yesterday's earthquake. I ask your prayers for Afghanistan and those seeking safety for their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. I ask your prayers for our partner school and church, St. Matthias, in Deslandes, Haiti. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for John Francis Whalen V who will be baptized at St. John's today for the wedding of Catherine Harper and Jack Vines, who was celebrated yesterday in Bratnell, Ohio. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. 
and bring them the joy of your salvation. I ask your prayers for our armed forces and all those who serve our nation overseas. And Shirley Baker, Leon Balaki, Eileen Bellini, Carolyn Kessler, Chloe Clancy, Ali, Nick and Charles Culver, Eliza Dean, Luke Demarest, and Nancy Fowler, Angelina Rose Freda, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzalez, Vanessa Gulo, George Harstead, Charles Hurst, Carol Jamison Hildebrand, Evelyn Hiller, Edith Hoffman, Nancy Hussey, Ruth Knutson, Mary Lee, Edward Martinez, Virginia Martinez, Una McHugh, China Mayor, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Alex Patterson, Peter Powelko, Joan Penrose Borum, Luna Bell Peron, Robert Rimmels, Raphael Roper, Jack Santaniello, Catherine Simon, Joan Small, Helen Colgate Smith, Carol Walker, and Connie. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, particularly Jed Evans and the 13 U.S. military personnel killed protecting and securing the Hamid Karzai International Airport in, on Thursday, Sergeant Johnny Rosario Pichardo, Sergeant Nicole L.G., Staff Sergeant Darren T. Hoover, Corporal Hunter Lopez, Corporal Dagan W. Page, Corporal Umberto A. Sanchez, Lance Corporal David L. Spinoza, Espinoza, Lance Corporal Jared M. Schmitz, Lance Corporal Riley J. McCullum, Lance Corporal Dylan R. Marola, Lance Corporal Karim M. McCoy, Navy Corpsman Maxton W. Savag, and Staff Sergeant Brian K. Naus. That your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send your spirit, O Lord, to rally the resolve of the peoples of the earth to find pathways to save human lives, to protect human rights and to resolve the hardships of those seeking refuge, asylum, and safety. Here are our prayers for the peoples of Afghanistan. This we pray as followers of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Almighty God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most our merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. You may greet one another with a sign of God's peace.
I invite you to take your seat. I have just a few announcements, which is to say I actually have quite a lot of announcements such that I made a list. I truly bungled it at 8 o'clock, so we do better. Um, first of all, um, you may have noticed that Gideon is not here. And for the eagle-eyed among you, you may have heard that there was a wedding in Ohio. Gideon is there, in, just outside of Cleveland, performing a wedding um, for a, a family that I think is connected to the church. I don't actually know them. Um, so that's where he is. He will be back next week. Um, and actually, I will be not here next week because I'll be covering for uh, the church in Woodbury. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is the at St. John's had a lot of very interesting announcements. Um, the first of which, which I think applies to most people, is that <clears throat> we will be having our annual Holy Smokes barbecue on September 12th. We've had some conversations with the vestry, etc., to figure out how we can honor that tradition. There will be food. It will be served in a slightly different way than we're used to, but we're really excited to welcome everyone home on the 12th and kind of do our normal thing. There'll be a bounce house. Um, and I think we'll be starting Sunday school on that day, although I need to nail that down more. Um, the second thing is, this fall, um, we're doing a new thing where we are inviting members of the community who might have an interest in reflecting on the scripture of the week to preach in the church. So um, I know in the past there have been lay preachers from St. John's, but it's been some time. Um, and oftentimes I think those have been people in particular roles. But we're making an open call to folks that might um, be interested in sharing their perspective on the gospel and reflecting on how it applies to all of our lives. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, reach out to Gideon. I think we are thinking maybe four or five people, I can't remember the number, and there's a few that have already expressed interest. Um, so if that's something that appeals to you, please reach out. Um, gosh, this has been a hard week in the world. The people of Haiti continue to um, recover from the many devastating things that have happened there. And the diocese has asked us to make uh, available a number of opportunities to support good work that is happening in Haiti. You can find information in the At St. John's about contributing to Episcopal Relief and Development, which has an ongoing um, on-the-ground presence in Haiti. Haiti is the largest diocese in the Episcopal Church. Um, and um, there's also, of course, you can always donate to the work that St. John's does at St. Matthias, um, in partnership with St. Matthias Church in Dayland. Um, and if you'd like to make a donation on, in that, it's very easy to do on our website. And if you just make a note, I think there's a, either a drop down or a note, but we actually read the notes. So if it says that it's going to St. Matthias, it'll go to St. Matthias. Um, thank you, Dan, for reading the list of uh, those who died in Afghanistan. I know that's been on many of our hearts watching what's been happening there. Um, so that has been a challenge. The other thing is, is that many of you may have heard that the North Shore Soup Gosh, I don't know what it's called. Soup, it's an H. Um, the, it's a soup kitchen food pantry in Glen Cove suffered a devastating fire this week. Um, and so, what? Oh, sorry, I thought somebody was saying something. Um, and so there are a lot of um, different ways that you can support um, that. They have been receiving donations. Um, I think we'll, we're going to try to make sure a link goes out, but if you look... Um, online, it'll be easy to find. Um, it's really a huge loss to that community. They served lots of folks. And the community at St. John's in Laddingtown was very involved with them. So um, actually, you might even check their website for information about how to donate. Um, on September 11th, we will be having a small service, short service, to a memorial for recognizing the 20th anniversary of um, the attacks on the World Trade Centers. And we're all, um, hoping that people in our community will share with us names of folks who either died on 9-11 or died directly as a result of 9-11. We know that folks that were involved in the cleanup um, died as well. Um, so if um, we invite you to join us, that'll be an evening service. I think it's five o'clock. Um, and um, if you'd like to share names with us, we'd love to be able to read the names of the people that were impacted um, in this community. And then finally, um, before I hand it over to June, we have um, 
you know, we're kind of gearing up um, the return of a lot of our different ministries. Our lay readers had been carrying along, but we are um, going to be reintroducing acolytes, um, and I think that there's conversations about the flower ministry and various things that are going on about how we'll be building up. So just keep your eyes open, um, and if there's anything that you'd like to be involved in, now is a great time to reach out to us because we haven't yet put together those schedules. So if you've been a reader in the past, you'll be getting requests about your availability. But if you're thinking that you haven't been before and you'd like to be now, it's a really great time that if there's something that goes on in the church to reach out to us and let us know that you'd like to be a part of it. Um, that's it. June. June is over there. Yes, for those uh, who are attending the, the service via Zoom, looks like I have to make an announcement from here. Well, first and foremost, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Carolyn Lau. Yay! This right lady right here. And her mother, Winnie, and uh, her flute teacher, Lauren, up there. Um, she part took part in Oyster Bay Music Festival, and she'll be offering the music during the communion, which is a Bach e minor sonata for flute. So thank you so much for offering your talent as a gift to us. Secondly... The choir season is starting. Woo. So it's been more than a year, I believe, that the choir sang here. So starting September 12th, we'll welcome all choirs. Now there's quite a bit. The youth choir, which is primary choir, junior choir, as well as a senior choir. They're, they're divided by age brackets four to six. 7 through 11, and 12 through 18. And of course, there is Ever Faithful Adult Choir, and there is also Choral Scholar Program, which I'll be starting this September, as well as Handbell Choir and Junior Handbell Choir, and I believe Organ Scholar Program, uh, program is in the works as we speak. So that's, I believe, eight groups in total. So if you are age four and above, I'm sure we could find a group for you. The details, are not too much details, but the, the sign-up process is listed at St. John's newsletter. So uh, please access your emails, and if you have not got them, check your spam folder. But please access them. If you, do not, if you did not receive them, you could go to St. John's website under music, and then you should be the first or the most recent article that you see. And of course, you're always welcome to reach out to me via email or the phone if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Vestry, do we have anything else? Did I miss anything? All right. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise.
Our service continues with the great thanksgiving. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you, gave, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, bring all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. I invite you to stand as we sing hymn number 436, verses 1 through 3 and 5. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.